What's growing on, gardeners? It's Saturday, March 11th, and it is a beautiful late winter day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And on today's video, I'm going to share with all of you the ultimate guide to growing cucumbers, melons, and squashes from seed. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications. And check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. The cucurbit family, or the gourd family, Family make up a family that consists of a tremendous number of plants that we commonly grow in our vegetable gardens. The cucurbit family includes cucumbers, your squashes like your zucchini, your summer squash, and your butternut squash, all of your melons like your watermelons, cantaloupe, and honeydew, pumpkins, and a tremendous number of other things that most of us have probably never even heard of. One of the biggest problems that gardeners, particularly new gardeners, have with the cucurbit growing process begins at the seed starting stage, and that is that many gardeners tend to start all of their warm weather vegetable seed at the exact same time, and that has a lot of people sowing their cucurbit seeds at the same time that they sow their tomato and pepper seeds, and that can lead to a tremendous complication. The most common vegetables that you'll see growing in most people's vegetable gardens will be tomatoes and peppers and both of these plants are from the nightshade family and they come from Central America from the subtropics often from higher elevation regions and as such they have developed to tolerate the cooler temperatures at night while a frost and freeze will kill them they can tolerate temperatures that dip into the low 40s and the upper 30s as long as they do not get frosted on and as long as it sufficiently warms up throughout the day and it gets nice and toasty warm and sunny in the daytime they will recover just fine and they won't have any nutrient deficiencies the other fact about these nightshades is that they take about eight weeks from seed sowing to transplant before they're ready to go out into your garden so your pepper seeds and your tomato seeds from the day that you plant that seed it's going to take about one to two weeks for them to germinate and then about another six weeks for them to become big enough to transplant out into your garden so from that initial seed sow you're looking at close to two months of time before you would plant them out into your garden your cucurbits on the other hand did not evolve to tolerate the cool nights that a nightshade can tolerate while it's safe to go ahead and plant your tomatoes and peppers out into your garden immediately after your last chance of frost you can't do that with your cucurbits. The nights need to be comfortably mild for your cucurbits. Nights in the 40s and upper 30s can actually kill your cucurbits. They will become very yellow and they will die off on you. They need nights to be consistently in the 50s or warmer. So for many of us, you won't want to transplant your cucurbits out into your garden for at least two to four weeks after your last frost date so those nighttime temperatures can moderate sufficiently. The other issue with cucurbits is that they're ready for transplant in only about half the amount of time of nightshades. I'm going to place a chart right here that shows your ideal times based on your last frost date to sow your cucurbit seeds and when they should be ready for transplant. And what you will find is that on a seedling heat mat, most cucurbits will germinate in only about three to four days, less than half the time of most nightshades. Then you'll also see that they will be ready for transplant in in only about three to four weeks. Again, half the amount of time of most nightshades. So if you start your cucurbit seeds at the exact same time of your nightshades, not only will your transplants be ready in half the amount of time, but at your last frost date, the temperatures won't be appropriate either. So if you start them all at the same time, your cucurbits will be started about six to eight weeks early, and that will have catastrophic effects on the plants. So for that reason, I don't start my cucurbit seeds until the week before my last frost date because I don't want them to be ready to go out into my garden until about three weeks after my last frost date. So in that chart I showed you, if we're already beyond your seed starting date because this video is a little late for you, don't worry. It is never bad to start your cucurbit seeds a few weeks late. Your plants will catch up if you plant them later into the year. So now that I've shared with you exactly when the best time to plant your seeds is, I will now show you how to plant your seeds. Before you begin planting your seeds, the first thing you want to do is you want to write all of the different varieties of seed down, as well as the quantities of each plant that you're going to start. Then you want to lay out all of your seed packets so they're in the same order that you're going to plant them. That will make your life a lot easier if you're organized up front and you can do everything in an assembly line fashion. The next thing you want to do is prep your seed trays and your planting medium. My favorite planting medium to plant seeds in is peat pellets. The reason why I like peat pellets so much is because it is a sterile medium. So your chances of getting damping off disease, which is a major problem and can kill all of your seedlings, it's much lower 
with a sterile medium like your peat pellets. So I pre-hydrated all of my peat pellets that you see right here with warm water. Now they are fully moistened and I let them cool down to room temperature. Then I labeled everything in this greenhouse right here. So all of these peat pellets are prepped and ready to go. I know exactly what I'm planting in and this is an awesome little peat pellet greenhouse. It makes germination so much easier and faster. The last tip I'm going to give you is to use a chopstick to help start your seeds. It makes life a lot easier. Not only can you go through and fluff up all the medium beforehand with the chopstick, but it makes it a lot easier to grab the seeds and place them. If you simply moisten the tip of the chopstick, it makes it really easy to grab the seeds instead of having to fumble around with little seeds with your fingers. And of course, if you're interested in these peat pellets or these greenhouses or any of the other seed starting trays I use, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront in the video description under the list seed starting supplies. Now we're going to start placing our seeds. And again, this is where the chopstick comes in handy because you can easily fit the chopstick underneath the seed packet to help pry it open. I've been using these seeds for a while, so um, I've taped them <laughs> shut several times. Now we're going to begin placing our seeds. These seeds are the bait alpha cucumbers, so I have two pods that I'm going to fill. So I'm going to place two seeds in each pod, and this is a process called overseeding. Because seeds don't have a 100% germination rate, if you only place one seed, it greatly reduces the chances of something sprouting in that individual seed tray. So always place two, and then if they both germinate, you can thin one out, meaning you can just clip it off or you can break the pellet in half and have twice as many plants. So now because we have everything pre-labeled, we are going to simply place the seeds in their designated peat pellet. Now that all of the seeds have been placed, we're going to embed them about a quarter inch into the peat pellets, and we're gonna use our chopstick to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply take this chopstick and I'm going to press the seeds about a quarter inch down, and then use my finger to just press down the peat on top. And we're going to do that for every individual pellet until all of the seeds are buried approximately a quarter of an inch, and it may look like that some of these larger seeds are too large to bury. For them, we're just going to press them in uh, manually with our fingers and cover them. Don't worry, they still will germinate. Cucurbits germinate very easily. And it's worth mentioning that these aren't the normal 36 millimeter peat pellets. These are actually the larger 42 millimeter peat pellets. So it's a little bit better for germinating uh, cucurbits because the seeds tend to be a lot larger than things like tomato or pepper seeds. Now all of the seeds are compacted down and they're ready to go. So I have them sitting in front of a sunny window on top of my printer in my office with a seedling heat mat down. And this seedling heat mat is the 10 inch by 20.75 inch seedling heat mat that is linked in my Amazon storefront in seed starting supplies down in the video description. I strongly recommend that everybody get themselves a seedling heat mat. There's no reason to resist owning one. They're dirt cheap and they will make your life starting seeds much easier here. Your cucurbits need very warm soil temperatures to germinate. So unless you have a very warm place for them to germinate, you are going to need a seedling heat mat in order to have good germination rates. Now that everything is in place, it should take about three to four days for a significant amount of the seeds to start germinating. It may take up to five to seven for some of the stragglers. So just keep an eye on them. I think in about three days, we should start to see some progress. It's Tuesday, March 14th, and we're already starting to see some germination in our peat pellet greenhouse right here so let's remove the lid and see what we're dealing with and what you'll notice is I have some germination with the Kajari melons right here I have two seeds coming up and two different peat pellets I have the party time cucumbers starting to break ground and also I have an early prince back here that is just starting to break you can see it right there and I think we're going to see a lot more germination within the next 24 hours it's March 15th and right on cue we have substantial germination inside our green house right here. I'll take off the lid and you will see already half the cucurbits in here have already germinated and they look fantastic. Now because I have such significant germination I had to take it off the seedling heat mat in my office because the seedling heat mat in the absence of sunlight they will get very leggy. It's too dark in my office to have bottom heat on these any longer. So instead I moved them out into direct sun off the seedling heat mat 
in my sunroom. So they're in a very sheltered, protected location. So now we are going to allow the germination to continue. So within the next two to three days, they should all be germinated and up. And because they're off bottom heat and now in intense sunlight, that is going to slow down their growth and that's going to help them thicken up and develop true leaves. It's March 21st and look how quickly all of our seedlings have grown in such a short period of time. They are all ready to be up potted in larger containers for the most part. And even while it may appear that a few of these didn't germinate, if you actually flip them over, you will see there are roots germinating in the bottom. So with these peat pellets, you have the ability to observe germination even though they haven't broken ground yet. So these three peat pellets that didn't germinate in terms of breaking ground, they have germinated. You can see the roots forming and we know the green growth is only a few days away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the very large cucurbits and I'm going to transplant them into three inch by three inch pots because that is the perfect size to up pot them into before we transplant them out into our garden. On the right, I have all of the peat pellets that I'm going to up pot into larger containers. In the center, I have the three inch by three inch containers that I have already prepared and have filled about a quarter of the way with a homemade potting mix that I made. And all the homemade potting mix is a few handfuls of a bag of peat moss that I have with a leftover cocoa core brick and some perlite that I also had a small bag of. So I'm going to use that as the base for all of the uh, peat pellets as well as the backfill to tamp everything down. Now I'm going to show you how to up pot them. When transplanting your seedlings into larger containers, the most important thing is that you do not get them mixed up. You want to be very careful. And in order to do that, you want to make sure that you maintain the plant labels perfectly. So just do this slowly, one at a time. I already have my plant labels made. And some people say uh, that you can up pot these peat pellets without uh, removing this, this supposedly biodegradable medium. I have found that um, it doesn't biodegrade so well. And this will tear some of the roots out with it. It's not a big deal. They all will recover. You see, I lost a whole bunch of roots right there. I promise you, these cucurbits are extremely vigorous. So don't worry about losing a few. Just be really conservative with your up potting. Don't rush anything. Make sure that you keep everything in perfect order. Now that all of our cucurbits that were ready for up potting have been transplanted into larger containers, we can simply go ahead and water them in gently and allow the water to soak into the mix, which may take a little time if the mix is dry. And just like that, all of your cucurbit seedlings have been successfully up potted. Now remember, cucurbits are vulnerable to temperatures below 50 degrees. You may leave them outdoors all night if you're confident the temperatures will be warmer than that, but if there is a chance it will drop into the 40s, carry them indoors and protect them so as not to stress them out. Your cucurbits at this point will be ready for transplant out into your garden in only about two to three weeks. Oh, and are you wondering what I did with the other seven peat pellets that I did not up pot? I started 25 peat pellets worth of seed, but I only transplanted one flat of 18. Well, I have four that haven't broken ground yet, as well as three that are really small and that could use a few more days. And I just didn't have time to do them all right now. So I combined them into another greenhouse that I had some spare room in that had some tomatoes and peppers that are in the process of growing. And as you can see, we are now very busy here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina because because we're only a couple of weeks away from the great transplant. Frost is almost behind us, and as you can see, things are getting pretty busy inside my sunroom. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about growing cucumbers, squash, melons, and other cucurbits from seed. If you follow all of the procedures outlined in this video, you will almost certainly be successful. Now, I know that there is a lot of information in this video, so if anything is unclear or if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments section below, and I will do my best to address them. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about anything I use in real life in my garden, I have all of the products linked in my Amazon storefront down in the video description. So expand that video description, click on the Amazon link, and you can see everything I use in real life in my garden in general. And while you're there, please check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. We just got back from our walk and Dale took his gentle leader off and now he's scratching his face. <laughs>
Uh, he walks so much better on it because of that hound nose of his. He just has to sniff every little thing. And those gentle leaders, let me tell you, he behaves so much better on them. But I guess it itches his snoot just a little bit too much. But as much as it itches his snoot, it's also really cute. <laughs> Dale, you are a wiry little worm. You know that? You are a wiry little worm. Oh, look at him go. Look at him go.